This is a photo of me when I was only three years old. This is the earliest photo that I have of myself. Because in Ukraine, there's a common belief that when your baby is born very ill and sick, you don't take photos of your baby because it's bad luck. I was born on the 11th of April, 1986, in a small town in Ukraine called Cherkasy, which is not very conveniently located, only 200 miles away from Chernobyl. On the 26th of April, only two weeks after I was born, the Chernobyl nuclear power station exploded, causing the worst in history nuclear disaster in terms of cost and casualties. As I said in the beginning, I was a very ill and sick baby, but my parents never expected what would happen to me. One day, my mom randomly approached my crib. She looked down at me, and she saw her baby is blue and pale and not breathing, and she thought I died. So she ran to my dad and she told him, oh my God, my baby is dead, my baby is dead, what should I do? And my dad, which also didn't really know what to do in such situation, just shook her physically and told her, you're a nurse, do something. Then my mom remembered she's actually a nurse. So she gave me mouth-to-mouth -mouth treatment until the ambulance came and she saved my life. I was a lucky baby, but other babies weren't as lucky as I was. Chernobyl caused defects in newborn, respiratory problems, heart diseases, cancer, and even death. In 2005, Belarus published a study according to which 95% of the newborn baby, 95% had at least one chronic illness. So why am I telling you about all this? Because that actually was the beginning of my personal journey towards developing passion to renewable energy. But let me start from the beginning. In the 1990s, my family decided to immigrate from Ukraine to Israel. And we settled in a small town in Israel called Akko. Akko was a beautiful town, but as a child, it was pretty boring. There was no smartphones, there was no computers. There was no cinema or clubs or bars. So most of my time as a child, I spent on the beach. When I was growing up, I knew I want to come out of Little Akko and I want to make a change, but I didn't really know how. So I decided to go and study political science and English literature in Haifa University. I was sure that as soon as I will finish my studies, I will join one of the biggest parties in Israel and I will become this great leader that changes all the political sphere in Israel. But obviously, when I finished my university, I found out that there's no lineup of politicians that are waiting for me for an English literature major. So I had to find a job, because I was already older, I finished my studies, and I went to a popular uh, job search website. And in the website, there was an ad for an English Hebrew translator in a renewable energy company. So I said to myself, translation is definitely not my passion but I can maybe do it temporary in order to make some money and to move from small little Akko to Tel Aviv, that I heard about it, that it's the city that never sleeps. So I started working in the company. I worked there for a year as a translator, and although the company wasn't exactly my cup of tea, I did get two very positive things out of there. I found out about wave energy. First of all, I found out that wave energy can produce twice the amount of electricity that the world produces today, which is a very significant amount. The second thing that I found out, that there's a race in the world among huge companies which are spending a lot of money in order to try and develop the first commercially viable wave energy solution, and with no success. I understood that the first company or person that would be able to do it would really make a change. And of course, I wanted to be that person. So I started researching the wave energy field. I went into databases and online sites, and I read books, and I read every piece of information that I could actually find. And I came up with my own patents and ideas and discoveries regarding wave energy. But I was jobless now because I quit. I had no money, no contacts.
So I just put the idea aside as unrealistic. One day, I was invited to a pool party. A pool party is definitely not a place to do business or work on patents, but I was sitting on a tanning chair, wearing my bikini, drinking champagne, and next to me sat a guy named David, and he told me that he recently purchased a surf camp in Panama. And while sitting in his surf camp and watching the waves, he understood the waves have a great potential in them. And he too spent days and nights researching the wave energy field and trying to come up with all kinds of ideas and solutions on how to make it happen on a commercial scale basis. So I was shocked. Wave energy is my passion. How can it be that you meet somebody in a pool and he tells you it's my passion as well? And that moment was actually the beginning of our company of Echo Wave Power. But David and I both weren't engineers. So it's great that we had ideas, but we couldn't make sketches, we couldn't make calculations, we couldn't make blueprints, we couldn't actually make anything in the practical level. So three months later, after meeting him, I found myself on a plane to Ukraine, to the same city where I was born, making a competition between 300 Ukrainian engineers to choose the best five that will develop the theoretical basis of our ideas. We did it. The calculation proved to be correct. According to the calculation, everything was supposed to work, but now we wanted to check it practically. So we rented a wave pool in the Hydromechanical Institute in Kiev. We rented one pool, and the pool next door were scientists from Iran. So that was a bit surprising. So I went to their pool, and I asked them, what are you testing there? They said, torpedoes. And I said to them, OK, can I take pictures of your torpedoes? That's so cool. And they looked at me, no, you're from Israel. You're probably a Mossad agent. You can't take pictures of our torpedoes. So in the end of the day, I don't have any pictures of torpedoes to show you. But on the bright side, the results of the testing went really well. And we were able to enlarge our system to greater sizes. First, we installed the system in the Crimean Peninsula in Ukraine. And then we wanted to move it to Israel, and we chose Jaffa port as the location. Now, we were sure that in Israel, everything would go smoothly, because I was born, not born here, but I was most of my life here, and I know the language better, and everything is much easier and more developed. But one of the requirements of Jaffa port was actually to make insurance to my wave energy power station. So it sounds pretty simple, so there I was, calling every insurance company I could think of, telling them, hi, I'm in, I'm 26 years old, and I want to insure my wave energy power plant. And the people just hung up on me or told me, listen, we can insure your car, we can insure your house. We don't know how to insure a wave energy power plant. So the funny thing was that I didn't own a house or a car. I did own a wave energy power plant, so that was problematic. But in the end, we were able to make the insurance, and the technology is working and installed at the moment in Jaffa port. But let's see how the technology works. Basically, our system is very simple. The floaters connect to existing structures. They're going up and down with the movements of the waves and pressing hydro cylinders. The hydro cylinders create pressure in land-located accumulators, and this pressure is used to turn the hydro motor, turn the generator, and send the electricity to the grid. Now, when there are stormy conditions and there is risk for our system, we also have storm protection mechanism. So here in the photo, we can see the power plant in Gibraltar actually being lifted above the water level, or we can also sink it a submarine under the water level until the storm passes. And when it passes, the system automatically commences operation. Now, what is unique about our system? We use tailor-made unique floater shapes for every location of implementation, in addition, we have the storm protection mechanisms. We have a very smart conversion system that enables to take the energy from the wave and make it into electricity. We have a, a system that is mostly located on land, just like a regular power station, and a smart automation that controls the whole workability of the station. Now, when we felt comfortable with our system, we decided to start our marketing efforts. And in the beginning, that wasn't easy as well, because I didn't really look like the traditional energy field older man, let's call it. So when I went to conferences, everybody thought that I'm David's secretary, and nobody wanted to talk to me. <laughs> Until he told them, listen, she knows better, talk to this girl. And they did. 
Then when people came to my office, I would walk into the meeting and they would tell me, espresso please, a glass of water, we're thirsty. <laughs> and then they would say, okay, where's the person that we're meeting? And I would say, it's me. And they would look at me like, what, you? But in the end, the product spoke for itself. And we were actually able to close deals in Mexico, China, Cyprus, Gibraltar, and the UK. Now we only had to choose where we would build our first commercial scale power station. We decided to build it in Gibraltar, not only because of its central location on the map, but also because Israel and Gibraltar share very common values. Israel and Gibraltar are both relatively small countries with neighbors that don't always favor our presence. So we have to be very independent in terms of our electricity and water production. So a month ago, I came back from Gibraltar from the launch of our power station, and there I was, the little girl from Mako, standing side by side next to Gibraltar's prime minister and Gibraltar environmental minister, and together cutting the green ribbon. So why am I actually here today? Most of you probably think that I'm here in order to promote wave energy. But no, although wave energy can provide twice the amount of electricity that the world produces now, I believe it's only part of the solution. Everybody should do our part. If it's just taking a plastic bottle and throwing it to the correct recycling bin, or if it is developing and supporting other renewable energy technologies such as wind, solar, tidal, and others. Because according to the World Health Association, there are 7 million premature deaths that are directly caused by air pollution. One out of eight people in the world at the moment are dying out of air pollution, which means basically that one of the eight people sitting here in the audience would die out of air pollution. Definitely th there has to be something that would be done about it. But that's also not my main message for you today. Some of you may guess that my main message for you today is go more to pool parties because it's a great place to do business. Look what we did. But no, that's definitely not my message as well. My message for you today is believing in yourself because how many of you had a great idea but you said, I'm not an engineer, I don't have the contacts, I can't make it and just put it aside. I'm here to tell you if you have an idea and it's really your true passion, then you should go for it. Because passion is the greatest renewable energy source. Warren Buffett said that without passion, there wouldn't be any energy. And without energy, there wouldn't be nothing at all. And this is an idea worth spreading. Thank you very much.